All right. Time to get started. Uh, let's see. So I feel like the camera has been knocked a little bit. There we go. And uh, what are we doing today? I don't know. <laughs> let's figure that out. Um, so just looking back between uh, the last thing, excuse me, the last thing I said in Discord, um, which was about some performance testing that I was messing around with, I think towards the end of the last coding stream. Um, so we were trying various things in AWS, different sized containers, I think, for the uh, batch job. Right, trying various sizes and not seeing a huge change. You know, 10, 9, 8 minutes um, between different uh, instance or container sizes. Um, all right, so were we going to work on the audio transcriber or the like speech to text? Maybe we were. Maybe, maybe that's what we were doing. I mean, what's been committed and what's not? Okay, a bunch of stuff has not been committed, including this main.rs file. So maybe we started working on that. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the idea here would be that we would be creating a new batch uh, job that would be doing A, uh, doing the transcription. Well, let's just look at the file. Okay. So we have a somewhere in here. We have main. Remember to use the outline. It's very handy. We have a main function. Uh, I think that should be legible on on the stream. Yeah. So we have a main function. It gets run. We get our AWS config from the environment. Then we load our own application specific configuration, uh, which has an input bucket and a DynamoDB table uh, names. We grab arguments. Um, thinking if it's worthwhile to pursue kind of actual proper argument passing library at this point. Um, the intent is this is just, you know, run from a script, right? So um, if this was something that I was going to be running manually or expecting other people to run manually, I might care more about having nicer, nicer interface here. Uh, okay, so we get the input key. It's one of the arguments. Uh, input bucket is not one of the arguments. That's a hallucination from uh, Copilot. Uh, and then initial prompt is kind of our context that we preload. And then language is the language that we're expecting the, the speech is in. And so then we also get an S3 client and then we run Whisper on S3 object. So this is where we uh, run a Python, uh, Python code. Uh, which is buried a couple layers in. Here we go, we're running Whisper uh, and we're passing all of these different options. Um, to do. Consider we're using a different model. There you go. There are like it's like tiny, small, normal, something like that. I don't know, but uh, we might consider different ones. I think um, in the previous use case where this, where we were invoking Whisper, um, this was much more of a, let me go run this thing and I'm gonna expect results. I'm gonna action on it immediately. Whereas the workflow that I'm trying to build here is more of a uh, 
um, drop the files in and it just works behind the scenes. Um, what am I trying to say? Essentially something that I think how I'm expecting this to go is that drop off the files and then come back later. And so not I'm not in a rush to get the result um, is, is kind of the end state for this. Um, and something else we could do at some point is actually test other things besides using Whisper here uh, in this audio transcriber uh, program is what we're making. We're making a little uh, command line program effectively. Um, So what is, I mean, besides the to-do there, what else do we need to do for this to make this work? Uh, so if we go back to main. We run that and then, oh yeah, now we're, <laughs> we, we haven't done anything with that yet, right? So we, we have models, the output of what the whisper command, like a vector of segments or an error, and then we want to write to DynamoDB. Um, I think this should be, yeah, this should be like probably something that will auto, we'll be able to, uh, uh, well, this I don't want. What is this doing? This is gonna take the Whisper output and JSONify it. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do any of that. Um, Let's see. Let's let's look at another example. So in Ooh, actually. Um things yeah. To do. Sure. Um things that we do in the previous incarnation of this code, right? So um Right here, we are running this command and we're capturing the, well, we're grabbing the standard input because we're piping the output of reading from S3. Um, this I cribbed from an example from the, uh, the S3 crate that we're using. SDKS3, um, which has a kind of a, a, a streaming style, like we read bytes and we write them somewhere else. This is something we probably should do in video ingester as well, um, in terms of piping. We could consider doing that because what we're doing in the in the video ingester program is that we're dumping everything to a temp file. We're waiting for that temp file to be written, and then we're um, reading from that file in a couple of different commands. I think the fact that we are using that file in several commands is potentially why we might not want to pipe, like stream. It gets interesting, right? So if we wanted to, there's some opportunities maybe to, like we could introduce like a, um, a buffer in, in various ways and um, th there are things we could do but I don't know if it's really worthwhile to do um, and I probably won't really know until we get like wire more stuff together and see this in practice or if this ever becomes like an application that is multi-user that other people are using then we can get performance metrics across you know usage uh, anyway but for here, yeah, so we're, we are, bum, 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 we call try next, which might get us some bytes. Uh, and then we see how many bytes that is. And then we, why do we care about bytes link? Uh, because we're keeping a count. It's just for logging. We're accumulating the number of bytes that we've transferred just to, for logging purposes. 
Um, and then we write those bytes to the standard input of the whisper uh, detection command. So this is where I want to rename this. This is like whisper. Um, STDN. Makes it a little bit clearer what's going on. So we're, we're piping the contents of the S3 object to Whisper, and then we flush. So we uh, so the child STVN, it's interesting. It says flushes this output stream. And it's something we're writing to. Okay, so I won't read too much into that. Uh, and then we wait for the whisper program to complete and get its exit status. And then we do some error handling. We parse the uh, output JSON file that was created. And then we, or rather we read it and then we parse it. And that gets us our whisper output struct. Theoretically, uh, we'll see if that actually works. Uh, okay. Why, why did I, why did I go through the process of <laughs> what that's doing? What, what was I thinking? Um, maybe I was just wanting to make sure everything that we needed was there. That could be true. I don't, I don't remember. Um, so in the video ingester, I do remember. Oh, right. So we, we, I was looking at this and then that got me out thinking about how the other one worked. And yeah, anyway, what I wanted to do is I wanted to come over here and look at how we are talking, how we're interacting with DynamoDB. So we have this little function here uh, where we grab a client and then we do stuff like this. Now, Is this going to make sense? How is that? How is this going to make sense? Like, where do we, where do we want to write the results to? So, hmm. Uh, things we won't, don't want to do. And kind of a parallel to what we ended up doing with the non AWS hosted version of this. Like this program runs once per input video file, uh, of which there are many from a stream. So I don't want this to simply take the output and append it to a list of results. Um, because we're not going to, well, we actually are likely to guarantee that this is going to happen in a certain order because what we're going to do is in the, um, initial prompt, we're going to carry over context from one video to the next. We're going to use initial prompt to do that. Um, but while that kind of the semantics, is that the right word? The, the way of thinking about how we're going to use it from a higher level perspective is that we're going to invoke once and then we're going to look at the results and invoke a second time and a third time. And there is going to be an ordering. I don't know that I want to code this program to bake in that assumption, right? Because this doesn't, this doesn't need to concern itself with that like higher level concept of how it's going to be used, just that it takes a video file. It takes these arguments and it saves the result. Um, so if that's the case, then the, what I don't want to do is I don't want to bake in assumptions about, um, like I wouldn't want to, so we, let me, let me go to the AWS console. That's going to be a little bit clearer. Uh, so we have, 
refresh so all these tabs are logged out so we have items in this table and we have like silence detection information that's empty in this case metadata keyframes and so i could add a new key here uh, a new attribute rather to this item about this video file called um transcription transcription segments something like that that i guess is fine because this item does represent this one file this one video file that we're processing um in the past version of doing this where we're putting this into what were we doing we're putting all the uh, information into Redis, and then we were going to scrape that together. Um, and then eventually that would end up in, in Postgres. This is like DynamoDB here is kind of our equivalent of what we were doing in Redis before. Um, but with Redis, what we were doing is we were doing multiple video files, and then we were appending all of the results into one thing, representing the whole stream. But here we're segregating the information to be per input video file so that that is uh, literally kind of a partitioning the data in that way. Um, so I think that's good. And I think we can just maybe edit this item to add an attribute. Um, so let me think about the semantics here. Do we want put item? I think if we do put item, we have to supply Let's see, dynamo TV, put item. What are the semantics? What are the, what is the, what does put item mean, right? So it creates a new item uh, or replaces an old item with a new item, right? So if we put an item and it has the same primary key as, um, uh, well, this is, this is saying the same thing, but the opposite direction. But if we try to put an item and the same, Thing exists identified by the key uh, the new item completely replaces the existing item right so we don't want to replace because we don't want to have to resupply all the same attributes can we do an update we update an items existing attributes There are, there's all sorts of stuff around conditional updates you can do in DynamoDB too, um, which is really nice from a, uh, since there aren't really transactional semantics like there are in a uh, RDBMS, um, there are things where the operations you can do can be conditional on uh, values being a certain, in a certain way. But we don't need to worry about that, I think here. Um, So I think we want update item. So we go back here and we say, we don't want to do a batch, right? Because we don't actually need to update multiple items. It's just one item. Um, so we do dynamo tb dot update item. All right. Let's see, copilot. Will you figure out what to do here? Okay, it's going to select the table name for market config. It's going to use the input key as the input. Well, it's actually called key in this table. The key is the key. Uh, hence, the attribute, attribute, the, the attribute name key uh, corresponds with the primary key here. Uh, and then attribute updates transcription. And then this is going to attempt to take our output from whisper and just jsonify it and then send that as a string and we don't want to do that um can we be clever so suppose i wanted to provide a way way to convert uh, 
uh, into, well, really convert the whisper output struct into um, an attribute value. Okay, so yeah, you implement from, from whisper output for attribute value. Can we do that? I think we can. Or maybe we have to go the opposite way. There are rules around what you can implement for what. So I think we have to go this way. Like if we, hold on, let me. So if we do this, I think this doesn't work because we can't. Oh, it doesn't complain. Interesting. Uh, this would be good, right? Because then we could do something like that. Oh, what does this take? This takes a attribute value update. Ah, this is a legacy parameter. Use update expression instead. So let's not do uh, update expression. Okay, set um, transcription. Uh, this is this is familiar to me now. So there's a there's a whole like expression language that you can do with DynamoDB. Um, and This method takes one argument. Interesting. Can we look at this? Oh, right, right, right. So this doesn't take a second argument like this. This is just the expression. Copilot's just imagining thing, things. And then probably something like this does exist. Yay. All right. So we're... we're uh, defining an expression attribute value called transcription, the colon, the colon's important, and it has this value. So we're parameterizing this expression, right? And so we're being able to, we're able to set the attributed transcription to be whatever value is represented here. Um, so this works except for the part where this is probably not what we want. Let's take a look at what we did. Don't need to say attribute value here you can just say self i i feel surprised that we can i guess this is okay as long as one of the two things is defined in the scope of this i think if we were trying to do from oh, i don't know uh vec <laughs> for attribute value we wouldn't be allowed to do that But the question is, is this going to do what I want it to do, right? So um, we take our existing segments from Whisper Output, we iterate, we map, and then we build something. Uh, we build that hash map where we have start time and end time that correspond with numeric values for start time and end time. Uh, of course, these numeric, this, this enum here needs to actually be a string, so it converts to two string. Uh, in time, in time, and then text is the text. That is uh, represented as a string. And then we combine, we convert that hash map that we just built into a map, an attribute of type map. And then, so we collect that, so we now have a vec of attribute value, and we wrap that into an L, which is type of a list, and it's a bot. By bot. Ah, I should have not even said anything because that didn't even show up in normal chat. Okay, that's fine, even better. Okay, so I think this actually, Copilot did something uh, nice for us here. I think this will work. 
Um, and I think that comment is redundant, so I'm gonna remove it. Okay, so this will update our existing item in our table with this key of input key. Um, the input key being the key in the S3 bucket where the file is that we're processing, um, which is, oh, not the same thing, not the same thing, right? So this input key is not the, the key for the video, it's the key for where the audio is, which is not the same thing, right? So it's actually this value. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the, so this, actually this will be five because this is gonna be uh, item key. Right, I could, like looking at this value, you can see that obviously this is just like this value with audio slapped on the front, but that's a detail that I don't want this program to know about. I don't want to have to, have to worry about that. So um, we're, we're not going to. So I think that'll work. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is down here, we're gonna use item key here. This will let us find this record. Yeah. Yeah. So this should work. Hmm. So now we need to deploy it. <laughs> well, we need to build it. Um, and I don't have. I, I don't have a handy way of doing that right now, other than just doing it. And line by hand, so we're gonna do that. Uh, so I need, do I need a tab or ECR, ECR. Actually, no, I don't, I can do that all from the command line, I think. Uh, hopefully there's nothing sensitive <laughs> in my command history, there we go. Okay, so first we have to Authenticate Docker log. You have to do Docker login with credentials for this AWS account uh, and ECR repository. And then we're going to build. Um, we don't need any of this build org stuff anymore. It's going to be audio transcriber. We're going to tag it as audio transcriber so we can find it again. Okay. And this is not going to work uh, quite yet. Let's take a look at. Do we have a Docker file? We do have a Docker file. Um, it's not going to necessarily have. Well, it has FFmpeg. We don't actually need FFmpeg for this container. I'm not sure what we need. Let's take a look at our main Docker file. Uh, and figure out what it provides in terms of whisper. Here, we do need these two things. I think we don't need, need FFmpeg. We might not need some of these other things as well. I'm not sure. Uh, and then open AI Whisper. place to stick the model. Oh yeah, so I think this was specifically so that I could cache that using um, uh, how I was using this with Docker Compose. 
I don't know if this is going to be relevant for this use case. Uh, this needs to be updated. How many places does video ingester appear? Okay, so replace that with audio transcriber. Yeah, so I think this is something that's coming from Gartner Compose. Model path. Interesting. Is that, let's save that, close that. Uh, audio transcriber. Are we parameterizing the model path when we run whisper? No. And the fact this exists suggests that maybe it's hard coded in the other thing too, I wonder. Um, let's create the folder, I guess. Um, okay, so this command might work now, assuming the program builds it all. Right? Mm. So we're gonna get this built and then I think the next step will be to start to look at getting um, things in place on the Pulumi side to uh, get this deployed and get this like hooked up to things. What's that gonna look like? Well, we're gonna have this this Docker image built and pushed up to ECR. Um, well, let's talk about that. Okay, so Pulumi, uh, on the Pulumi side of things, we have a lot of stuff going on here. Let's, can we collapse a few things? Um, at some point, we'll be in a place where it'll make sense to start um, Factoring out, shall we say, uh, abstracting or uh, building um, abstractions uh, for this infrastructure. It's just kind of uh, a little early to do that. So here I just have something called ECR repository, but really it's the ECR repository for a brainless. Hello. How are you doing? Let's rename this. This is going to be the ECR repository for the video ingester container images. Jester repository is a good name. Doing well, how am I? Uh, doing good, doing good. Took a while to uh, remember 
where the project had been left off from the last coding stream, but I got there. Is this, is this variable used somewhere? Okay, we use it for the container properties, okay. So, and then we want a um, uh, audio transcription, transcriber repository, sure. That, that is what we call the audio transcriber. So the, rep the repetition here tells me that maybe we should make some kind of reusable thing, especially something that's going to recalculate maybe the image tag. I don't know. Audio transcriber. Refer to it there as kind of this job definition depends on it. Then for the image tag, we refer to it in container properties. So it might look to see like if we can abstract this definition of properties and job definition and Potentially, yeah. Let's see. What can we what can we pull out of this to make this a little bit easier to get a handle on all the things that are going on in here? Like we have all the compute environment setup stuff. Um, and there's going to be at least two of these because we're going to have one that's going to use Fargate to just use Amazon managed infrastructure for running the containers. And then we'll have another com compute environment that uses EC2 instances so that we can have GPU for some of our jobs. Um, and that's going to mean there is going to be multiple job queues. Now, what refers to batch queue here? So we refer to that in the uh, event target role and in the event rule. This consumes the compute environment. Does anything else refer to the compute environment? No. So presumably not these things either. Interesting. So this seems like maybe a good thing to pull out as a separate, um, I forget what we call them in Pulumi. It's not construct because that's what you call them in the CDK. Uh, let's see, Pulumi docs. How 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 do we how do we Pulumi? So let's make a uh, Fargate compute um, batch queue. So 
this is going to provide a class of the same name. It's going to encapsulate the, the code that I have highlighted here. And then potentially what I would do is I would create another one for EC2. And we'll figure out like probably initially it's just going to have all the details and we might, you know, at some point parameterize those if we kind of different environments and job queues. Or is this the right abstraction? So I noticed that the batch queue, the job queue for AWS batch does take multiple compute environments. Uh... <laughs> yes, you did mention that you I, I thought that was fixed and you just needed to do unit tests on Friday. You just saw a question pointing to code that you wrote and now thinking to get involved or to let it wait. You gotta give people an opportunity to, to learn for themselves brainless. Oh, from, <laughs> it's a bug from before 2020. It's a long, long ago, yes. I wonder if it would make sense to actually just to have multiple compute environments and to refer to them in the batch in the, in the job queue. Um, and then jobs go to the right compute environment based on some parameters. I'm not sure. I think we could autocomplete here, do we? No, that's, that's all nonsense. Uh, user. A user saw someone else's info. Oh no. That could be bad. What kind of info? I mean, there's a difference between a user saw someone else's username and a user saw someone else's social security number or equivalent. <laughs> PII. Oh no. Could be worse. It could be PHI. It could be like MRI results or something. Yeah, name, phone, email. Yeah. Might be an issue. Oh, how how do how do compute environments and job queues work? It's more of an AWS question. So AWS batch uh, docs. So job queues. Did I switch to the work laptop. Yes. Look, I mean, if it's from like four years ago, I mean, unless it was malicious, which I'm sure it wasn't, you know, even, even if it was yesterday, everyone, everyone makes mistakes. And I hope your company does not have a culture of putting the blame on individuals and instead looking at, you know, the bigger picture, the systems of, <laughs> um, processes and systems that result in things happening, right? Why wasn't it caught four years ago, etc. Uh, jobs are submitted to the job queue where they reside until they can be scheduled to run in a computer environment. Multiple job queues, yeah. So you can have a queue that uses EC2 on demand instances for high priority jobs and another queue that uses EC2 spot instances. So I do want to use the, I do want to do this. Uh, yeah, they're misunderstanding the code. Yeah, that can be, that can be important to be timely in feedback to prevent people from going down rabbit holes. Um, assuming you're right, of course. Um, but you know, no, I get that. This fair scheduling policy thing, right? So can we, my question is, can we have one job queue and have work go to different compute environments? Yeah, one or more compute environments and assign an order of preference. Set a priority. If a computer environment is associated with more than one job queue, the job queue with a higher, okay, so there's like multiple levels here. 
That's interesting. So... Batch schedule evaluates when and where how jobs run submitted to job queue. First in, first out. Okay. Wait, does the job queue have... Well, at least here I'm not setting the... Um, orchestration type. Does that just get inferred? Do job queues themselves have? Things I don't know. Okay, now there is there is a type on the job queue. Uh, I'm surprised that's not expressed here. Um, Swift's name, ops, compute, environment order, job queue name, priority, state tags, props, any. All of the compute environments must be either EC2 or Fargate. They can't be mixed. Okay. Well, that answers my question of how I want to structure this then. So I want to make a um, component that encapsulates setting up the computer environments and the queue. Because I won't need multiple computer environments within a queue. Uh, so this is going to be a Fargate. Um, batch queue. Job queue. Dot pi. Let, let's start with that. Let's not overthink it. Yep. And that was an attempt to do a thing, but it's not the right thing. Let's go back to the Pulumi docs. So we wanted something like this to start us off. Um, do I want to use the word component? Nah. This module defines a Pulumi component resource that represents a Fargate batch job queue and associated resources, including the compute environment. Not the job definition. like that uh, package here is going to be globing telegram I guess um, infrastructure I guess the idea with this name is to really make sure to have a unique identifier for the component Type the name. Props. Okay, we'll see uh, how this comes out. And then uh, I want to just take all of this and move it into that file, yeah? That'll break some things. That's fine. We also need AWS native. How do we do the import for AWS native? There it is. Oh, well, yeah. There it is. Okay, so how do we, I think there's a thing we want to do here when we're using, or when we're using resources or components inside of our component. Yeah, like this. Component resources often contain child resources. The names of child resources are often derived. To ensure uniqueness. When constructing a resource, children must be registered as such. 
pass it with the parent option and then use the name here in the name. All right, so we can do something like that. And then something like that. And anything we're missing here is gonna need to be a parameter to this however that works I don't know yet <laughs> uh, all right so same kind of let's just copy that and then that yeah okay. my component args Register output, so we probably want to do that. Self register outputs. So, do we want? I think we don't want to, we only want to provide the batch queue, the other things aren't really relevant to anything outside of this. Um, maybe I'll just call it job queue. That is blob queue, <laughs> job queue. That, that is what on the example. There's my component RX here. I can explain. to want to say uh, from um, our gates that not be resolved. could not be resolved. So we can add infrastructure to extra paths or 
Can I do this? You know, you stop using Python a lot for uh, a while and it all comes down. Okay. Help me, Copilot. this hard. There are many ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Import thing. Yeah. 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 That's what I had in the first place. But, uh, doesn't like that. I mean, this this is wrong. I think this is this is Pylance not liking what's going on. I don't know what this is about. I think this this is valid. I think this this warning is wrong. Okay. Well, Twitch is gonna make me take a break, so I'm gonna take a break for a couple minutes. I'll be right back. 